Picture this. The hottest new artist topping the Billboard charts isn't a person at all, but an AI-generated persona. Their chart-topping hit? Composed entirely by algorithms. Think it's far-fetched? Well, buckle up, music lovers, because this future isn't just possible, it's probably already happening. Hey there, my melodious molecules and harmonious hadrons. Theodore here, ready to pull back the curtain on the wild world of AI-generated music and synthetic superstars. Today, we're diving into a digital revolution where the line between human and AI creativity is blurring faster than a DJ's crossfade. Are we witnessing the birth of a new era in music or the death of authentic artistry? And how long before you're jamming to an AI hit without even knowing it? Let's untangle this algorithmic symphony, shall we? Hey everyone, ready to dive into the world of AI music. You guys sent in some really interesting articles and research papers, so it seems like you're just as fascinated as we are by how this tech actually works, what it can do and what it means for like the whole music industry. Let's get into it. It's pretty wild how fast AI music has gone from like a niche tech thing to yeah. something everyone's talking about. Right. We've got great articles like that one from Vox and then like super in-depth analyses of the latest AI models and even practical guides for musicians like what is AI in music production? Yeah, that Vox article had some pretty mind-blowing examples right off the bat. Like, did you know AI is being used to help artists like Randy Travis, the country singer, keep their careers going even after, you know, facing health problems? Oh, wow. It's kind of amazing to think AI could, like, preserve an artist's legacy that way. Yeah, it really makes you think about how AI could be more than just, like, copying what's already out there. Mm. But then... On the flip side, you've got all the controversy around those AI-generated songs that sound exactly like Drake or The Weeknd, which raises questions about, like, what does originality even mean when AI is involved, you know? If anyone can just create a new Drake song with a click, does it take away from the artist's own creativity and that connection they have with their fans? That's such a good point. It makes you think about what actually makes music meaningful, you know? But um, before we go too deep into all that, I'm curious about how it all works. Like, how does an AI even learn to make music in the first place? So it's not as straightforward as, like, just feeding a computer a Mozart symphony and hoping to the best. <laughs> right. It's more like training a, um, a musical apprentice, you can say. Yeah. These AI music generators, they learn by analyzing these massive data sets of music. Data sets. So, like, a giant library of music files. Exactly. It's like giving the AI this huge musical education, exposing it to tons of different genres, styles, and artists. And within those data sets are like hidden patterns, structures, and relationships between the musical elements that the AI can pick up on. So if you fed an AI, say a bunch of Beethoven, it would start to recognize the patterns and structures that make Beethoven sound like Beethoven. Exactly. So these AI music generators are like musical sponges soaking up every note and rhythm they come across. It's like they're binge watching the entire history of music from Bach to Beyonce and then remixing it all in their silicon brains. But here's the kicker. They're not just copying, they're creating. It's as if we've taught a computer to dream in melodies. Mind blowing, right? The Vox article talks about this using terms like weights and training. Essentially, the AI figures out which musical elements are most important based on like how often they show up and in what context. So through a really complex process of trial and error, it learns to predict what notes or chords are likely to come next in a sequence. Kind of like how we learn language by picking up on patterns and then using those patterns to make new sentences. Okay, that makes sense. But how does it go from there to actually creating something new? Does it just end up spitting out copies of what it's already heard? Well, that's the big question. And honestly, one of the limitations of current AI music generation you see, while AI can get insanely good at mimicking styles, it still has a hard time with real originality, especially when it comes to larger musical structure. So it could write a catchy melody, maybe, but not a whole symphony with different movements and like complex emotional themes. All right, let's break this down. Imagine you're teaching a robot to paint. You show it a bunch of Picassos and Van Goghs, and suddenly it starts cranking out original masterpieces. That's basically what's happening with music AI. 
It's learning the rules of music, the grammar of melody and harmony, and then writing its own musical sentences. But here's the million dollar consideration. If you feel the soul of the music, how did a machine capture it? Yeah, exactly. There's that paper we have, Music Composition with Deep Learning, and it really digs into this limitation, explaining how AI often relies on these short-term patterns. It can make something that sounds good at first, but it might lack that deeper coherence or like emotional depth you get from music composed by, well, you know, a human. So it's like the AI is great at grammar and vocabulary, but hasn't quite mastered storytelling. That's a perfect way to put it. And that's why, at least for now, a lot of people see AI as more of a tool to work with human creativity, not to completely replace it. Right. Like it can be great for inspiration, trying out new sounds or just breaking through writer's block, things like that. So it's less about AI taking over the music industry and more about humans and AI working together like as a team. Exactly. And honestly, that collaboration is already leading to some really cool stuff. For example, what is AI in music production? Goes through a bunch of examples of how it's being used right now. Like, did you know AI can actually create different genres and moods on demand? Wait, really? So like you could tell an AI, write me a bluesy jazz track with a kind of melancholy vibe and it would just do it. Pretty much. In fact, technical, musical and legal aspects talks about how some AI systems use specific parameters, things like mood and oddity, to control what they come up with. Mood and oddity, that's why, but hold on, how do you even teach a computer to understand something as like subjective and nuanced as mood in music? <laughs> yeah, it's really interesting how they do that. It's all about like breaking those subjective qualities down into musical elements, right? Like the things the AI can actually work with. For mood, it might be stuff like the tempo, what key it's in, or the harmonic progression, like a melancholy mood. You might use a slower tempo, put in a minor key, and maybe throw in some unexpected chord changes. So it's almost like the AI is learning the musical language of emotions. Exactly. And then for something like oddity, it might introduce like weird rhythms, unusual combinations of instruments, or even play around with the timbre of the sounds in a way that you wouldn't normally hear. Okay, so it's like giving the AI a set of tools and then being like, all right, now use these tools to make something that feels like this. Exactly. And, you know, the more data you feed the AI, the more it learns all these subtle relationships between the music and how it makes you feel. It's crazy how far this stuff has come in such a short amount of time. So beyond just like custom making tracks, what else can these AI tools do? What are we talking about here? Oh, man, the possibilities are huge that what is AI in music production piece gets into how people are already using it in so many ways. Like, for example, songwriters who are feeling stuck can use AI to come up with new melodies or current progressions, you know, just to get them going. So almost like a digital muse. Totally. And it can do more than just write new music, too. Did you know AI can also be used to make old recordings sound better? Like you could take a track that's been damaged or degraded over time and use AI to bring it back to life. Whoa, that's wild. It's like digital audio archaeology or something. Right. And AI can even help with the more uh, technical parts of music production, like mastering tracks to make sure they sound good on the radio or, you know, on Spotify and all that. Man, this is blowing my mind. It sounds like AI could be a total game changer for anyone making music, from someone just messing around at home to like a professional producer. For sure. But of course, with any new tech that has this much potential, there are, you know, ethical questions that come up, too. We've talked about the artistic side, but what about the legal stuff? Like, who owns the copyright to music that's made by AI? Oh, that's a good question. Is it the person who made the AI, the person using it to make music, or, like, the AI itself? Right. And the thing is, there's no easy answer. It's still kind of a gray area, legally speaking. Because a lot of times, this AI music is based on existing music, right? The stuff that was used to train it in the first place. So then you have to ask, was it even legal to use that music to train the AI to begin with? It gets complicated fast. It seems like the law is always playing catch up with technology. It's moving so fast. Yeah, exactly. Right. And then there are the economic implications to consider, like how this might affect the livelihoods of actual musicians. That makes sense. Like, if a company can just use AI to generate music for a commercial or a video game, why would they even need to hire a composer anymore? Right. And that's a real fear that a lot of musicians have, especially session players and composers who work in those industries. I think the Vox article mentioned Mark Rebo, the guitarist and composer. He argues that copyright is one of the few ways musicians can protect their work in the digital age. So if AI starts to chip away at that, it could have a real impact on their ability to, you know, make a living. 
it's like this weird double-edged sword, right? On the one hand, AI has the potential to make music more accessible for everyone, which is awesome, but it also has the potential to really disrupt an entire industry. Exactly. Like any disruptive technology, it's going to create winners and losers. I think having these conversations about the impact it could have, both good and bad, is super important. Yeah. You know, so we can figure out how to navigate this new world responsibly. So it's about finding that balance, right? Like, how can we encourage this amazing innovation while also protecting the people and the art forms that could be affected? Exactly. And finding that balance is always tricky. I mean, on the one hand, you've got these big players, right? Yeah. Spotify, Universal Music Group, all of them. They see this huge potential for AI to do things like create personalized music recommendations, discover new artists, even come up with completely new ways of making money from music. So for them, it's about using AI to like level up their business. Yeah, pretty much. And then on the other hand, you have artists like Mark Robot who are pushing for more transparency from these tech companies, stronger copyright laws, maybe even some kind of system where artists get paid when their music is used to train these AI systems. It's like this tug of war between the people who want to ride the wave of progress and the people who are trying to hold on to what's important, you know, the art, the livelihoods, all of that. That's a great way to put it. And honestly, I don't see that debate going away anytime soon, especially as this technology keeps advancing. So where do we go from here? What's next for AI and music? What does the future look like? It's like we're standing on the edge of something huge, you know, but we can't quite see what's on the other side. It really is. The future of AI music, I mean, it's full of potential, but it's hard to say for sure what direction it'll go in. I think that Vox article posed a really interesting question at the end, something to think about. Will AI like fundamentally change how we think about music and how we interact with it? Mm -hmm. Could we be moving away from that traditional artist audience thing to a world where everyone is a music creator? Wow. Instead of just listening to the next Beyonce album, we could all be part of making it. Yeah. And we're already seeing some artists doing really interesting things with that. Yeah. Like I think the article mentioned Yvonne Paz and Shelly Knotts. They're using AI as a tool, like right alongside their own instruments as part of their creative process. So it becomes less about AI replacing musicians and more about it being another tool in the toolbox. Yeah, exactly. And that paper, Music Composition with Deep Learning, it even suggests that AI could help us understand music theory in new ways. Yeah. Like it could reveal these hidden patterns, connections that maybe we wouldn't be able to see as humans. That's pretty cool. But is there a risk that, I don't know, AI music could become kind of generic? Like if everyone's using the same AI tools, will we end up with a bunch of music that all sounds the same? I think it's a valid concern. And that's why, to me, the human element is still the most important part. AI can create the notes, the rhythms, all of that. But it's the human element, the creativity and the emotion that really makes music meaningful, you know? So it's not about handing it all over to the AI, but using it to tap into our own creative potential. Exactly. Yeah. It's really up to us how this all plays out. We need to keep asking those tough questions. How do we protect artists when their work is used to train AI? How do we prevent bias in these systems? You know, so that it doesn't just become this echo chamber. It's a huge responsibility, and it's not just on the musicians or the tech companies, but on all of us. Definitely. It's on all of us to learn about this technology, to stay informed about what's happening, and make conscious choices about how we want AI to fit into our relationship with music. Let's consider this for a moment. These AI music generators are pulling from a vast pool of influences, more than any human could ever experience in a lifetime. They're creating truly novel compositions, blending styles and techniques in ways we've never heard before. It's arguably more original than anything a human could produce. And here's a mind bender. Recent studies suggest that language models are developing their own perspectives of the world. So who's to say AI won't start composing music about its own experiences? We might be on the cusp of an entirely new form of musical expression. The question isn't whether machines can create soulful music. It's whether we're ready to expand our definition of what soul in music really means. This has been an awesome deep dive. We've covered so much ground from the nitty gritty of how these AI systems work to the potential impact on the whole music world. I have to say, I'm feeling kind of a mix of excitement and I don't know, maybe a little bit of nervousness about the whole thing, but more than anything, just like inspired by the possibilities. Me too. And as we wrap up, I'd like to leave our listener with this. What role do you see AI playing in your own relationship with music? Will you use it as a creative partner, a source of inspiration, 
or something else entirely. The future of music is being shaped right now, and in a way, we're all part of writing that story. That's a great note to end on. A huge thank you to you for walking us through all of this. And to everyone listening, thanks for sending in such fascinating stuff to discuss. Until next time, keep those musical gears turning. Well, my rhythmic radicals, we've just scratched the surface of this AI-powered musical revolution. Will future Grammy Awards be accepted by lines of code or AI-generated avatars? Are we heading towards a utopia of unlimited creativity or a dystopia where we can't tell if our favorite artists are flesh and blood or just really convincing algorithms? Only time will tell. But one thing's for sure, the world of music will never be the same. So the next time you're vibing to the latest chart topper, ask yourself, am I connecting with a real artist's soul or am I being played by an AI's masterful illusion? Until next time, stay curious, stay skeptical, and above all, stay groovy.